My name is Desiree Langenfeld. I'm a biologist at the Experimental Lakes area. We feel very fortunate that we're able to use these whole lake ecosystems to study the impacts that humans are having on the environment. The Plastic Project is a multi-collaborator study led by Chelsea Rockman. We are looking at the fate and effects of microplastics on freshwater ecosystems. It's really important for us to kind of understand this since microplastics are in all of our freshwater lakes. They're everywhere from the top of Mount Everest to the ocean in human beings. So understanding how microplastics impact these systems is integral to preserving biodiversity and the natural environment. I think there's a couple factors for why the Experimental Lakes area is a perfect area to do this kind of thing. First of all, we have a long-term data set. And so that means we understand the chemistry and the biology of our lakes. That long-term data set then fits into the second thing that's really important, and that is we have special legislation at the federal and the provincial level that allows us to manipulate these lakes. That long-term data set then helps us to understand whether the manipulation actually had an effect or whether it was in the range of natural variability. One of the conditions of us operating here is that we have to put these lakes back to their original condition. The Research Advisory Board makes sure that we can put those lakes back to their original condition. So just take a pinch and then you can offer it to the water. Well, every spring and fall, we have a water ceremony that is hosted by the elders of Treaty 3 Territory. And we were recommended by them to perform a tobacco offering to the lake each time that we do any work on it. It's just like a really good way to show respect and appreciation for the lake. It's just like a good moment of reflection and to make sure that what we're doing comes from a good place. This is our third year of microplastic additions to the lake and we're going to be adding three different types of microplastics today. So we have the polyethylene. This is kind of the same material that like a kayak would be made out of. And then we have the polystyrene, kind of like a red solo cup would be made out of. And then we have the polyethylene terephthalate. This is the blue polymer. This one sinks. And this is kind of the same material that a water bottle would be made out of. And this is the landmark of basically like where we should be. My name is Chelsea Rockman. I became a scientist because I think that facts should inform policy. Early on in my career, I was doing toxicological studies with fish and microplastics and realizing that I was exposing fish to the exact same material that was in our face washes. People were finding microbeads in the Great Lakes, and so I wrote my first policy brief. I started to have that experience of talking to people, creating the legislation, to testifying in Congress, to helping inform how these bills can get passed. You can show people evidence in a beaker and they may say, well, that's just a beaker test, right? To be able to work in a real ecosystem System, to be able to show somebody how it actually impacts the ecosystem. There's really no closer way to showing that something can actually have an impact. It's these big scale experiments that show you something about real life that can not only inform the policy, but I think also really paint the picture that policymakers can understand and relate to and sort of motivates the policy to be pushed through. With our research, it's really important that what we learn doesn't just stay in necessarily the scientific community. We want to share this research with the world, with policymakers, people who can really make a difference. 